All right. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Saturday, November 2nd, 2024. This is your afternoon tropical update. We are into the month of November, and normally I'm able to put down the recording software and wrap it up for the season. But of course, with this season, that wasn't going to happen. We are watching an area of interest in the Caribbean today, Invest 97L, a gradually consolidating area of low pressure down south of Jamaica in the Central Caribbean Sea. The system is slowly organizing, expected to kind of pinwheel to the north and then eventually back to the northwest across Cuba, Jamaica, and move towards the Gulf of Mexico as we work into next week. This was something we've been talking about on the page for probably almost two weeks now, and it's finally starting to come together. We also have another area of low pressure to the north of Puerto Rico. This is kind of also moving generally off to the west, and this will kind of coax our system northward, and then they'll kind of merge up together as one system and move off to the northwest. Uh, also active today, we have subtropical storm Patty, a uh, a short-lived storm near the Azores Islands, moving right through there, actually, and forecast to move off generally to the east to the northeast. Obviously, no threat to the eastern U.S., but it did take the 16th name off the list. So this system, when it gets going, will be Raphael. Afternoon Hurricane Center update up to 80% chance in the next seven days and 70% in the next 48 hours. They kept it about 40% forever and then kind of moved that uh, number up pretty quick. The Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunters are forecast to go out there tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll, they'll be out there at uh, 730 uh, your boy will be at work much earlier than that to get them ready, and uh, we'll be seeing what this thing has for us when they get out there. But uh, I'm gonna start be you know it's gonna start be something we're on track of the next couple of days. Uh, Cone on Patty there, not much to worry about again. Yeah, you know, moving away from the U.S., no big deal. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at Invest 97L. So not much going on yet. We can see a couple of things of note. First of all, we have kind of a, a bit of a, a more consolidated area of rotation here um, off to the uh, in, in the Southern Caribbean Sea, but more broadly, there's broad cyclonic rotation here in this kind of elliptical shape. We have uh, trade winds, you know, uh, coming down associated with the high pressure over the eastern U.S. Uh, we have uh, moist air streaming in from the eastern Pacific, and this is all kind of consolidating around. And then we have this smaller area of low pressure kind of um, tightening up within there. And that's the system we're actually going to watch. This is actually what we're tagging as Invest 97L. So uh, not much thunderstorm activity yet. You can see there's uh, really not a whole lot going on. There's a few thunderstorms anchored off to the west side, um, but uh, there's still a hefty amount of wind shear. You can see the upper clouds in this region are all moving away. Way, and then the low level clouds are moving like this. So you have not only a speed shear, but a pretty significant directional shear as well. So any development over the next day or two is going to be pretty slow. Uh, but this is all going to generally pull northward. And uh, this overall pattern is something we call that kind of ridge over troubled waters pattern, something we get late in the season. Uh, you have strong high pressure anchored over the eastern U.S. and the high expands like this. And then because you have high pressure here, well, you have to have low pressure somewhere else. And you have that background response down here where you have an increase in vorticity city. And uh, overall, you know, the, the low pressure just kind of forms south of the high, and you thus have our next system. Water's still plenty warm enough in the Caribbean. So while you're thinking, well, it's November, why are we still dealing with this? Very well could be why. Uh, so looking at the GFS, kind of seeing what this thing's going to do over the next couple of days, we watch it move northward through the rest of the weekend and into early next week. This is going to pretty much move just north for the next couple of days. The upper flow is going to kind of pick this up, move it northward. It's going to move towards this other area of low pressure that uh, was over Puerto Rico, but has now moved past Hispaniola and is now over um, eastern Cuba on the GFS on this run going into Monday afternoon. We can see our system probably a tropical storm at this point, um, starting to intensify as it moves towards Jamaica. Uh, it'll move more northward and then begins to actually curve back to the northwest. You can see here as a strong high pressure system builds off the coast of the mid-Atlantic region, uh, this high is going to be pretty strong and pretty expansive, and this is going to force our system to move back to the northwest versus continuing to move north. We originally thought, and what a common pattern for November is, is a system can just escape out through the Bahamas, but because of the strength and direction of this high pressure, it's going to knock it back off to the northwest, which unfortunately puts it moving towards the Gulf of Mexico. Mexico. This juncture is pretty important because you're going to have some land interaction with, with Jamaica, which has some um, hilly terrain, enough to disrupt the storm, at least to some degree. Um, but the question is going to be, does it move south of Cuba? Does it move over Cuba? A storm moving along the spine of Cuba would have much more interruption than a storm that doesn't. The GFS kind of shows it riding very close. And then popping out near the Florida Keys going into Thursday. But there's a there's a pretty considerable spread here. The storm could be all the way over in the Yucatan Channel. It could be just over the western tip of Cuba. Or it could be directly over Cuba. And again, the, the track here of going like this, like this, 
or like this are three very different tracks. It may not look like much on this map, but a storm moving over Cuba for a long period of time versus moving south of Cuba could have very pretty dramatic implications on if we have a kind of sloppy, weaker tropical storm like the GFS shows here, or we have a well-developed hurricane near the tip of western Cuba. So that's kind of the gist over the next couple of days. And the euro kind of shows this too. The genesis on the euro a little bit slower, but it does eventually show those two lows kind of merging up. And then the euro uh, does move it off to the north. We're on the wrong run here. Um, you can see the euro also kind of spits it off near the tip of Cuba and see how the euro is much further to the west in the short term than the GFS is on its most current run being, you know, about the same time. European a bit slower, GFS a little faster with the storm. But uh, both models pretty much see some kind of tropical storm to maybe low-grade hurricane moving off the tip of Cuba on Wednesday night into Thursday morning. The question from there is then going to be, well, what does the Gulf of Mexico look like? Now, this time of year, I, I have cautioned people that the Gulf of Mexico is not as hospitable as it is in August and September and even October. Uh, the, the same uh, upper air patterns that gave us Helene and Milton will probably not be in place for this one. So if we go ahead and take this out to Thursday on the GFS, you can see on the 200 millibar chart, uh, the jet stream moving across the eastern U.S. and ridging northward means that the system is going to have a nice upper air pattern over the next couple of days. But then as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, you can see that the wind shear begins to pick up a little bit. Our system would be right there, and you can see these stronger winds out of the west, uh, westerly these are a lot stronger by November where the, the air is changing, the fall weather patterns are coming in, and uh, that presents a lot more wind shear than it does earlier in the uh, hurricane season. So uh, storms historically struggle to intensify as much moving northward. And I don't think this one's going to be any exception. The 200, 800 millibar or empty millibar shear map actually shows this a lot better, shows a much stronger uh, deep layer shear, which is what we would have here with a uh, upper uh, weather system that would be kind of through all the layers, not just an upper trough or something like that. Um, so this would impart a good amount of wind shear on our storm. And on the GFS run, it moves it through the Gulf of Mexico and kind of weakens it as it moves in. You can see that it eventually does recurve northward towards Florida, which the goalposts right now seem to be some kind of Florida to maybe Mississippi, Alabama region landfall, but it weakens it pretty dramatically. And this has been a, a theme for quite a while now. The GFS brings it up and then weakens it as it approaches. There will be drier air and there will be wind shear over the Gulf of Mexico. So what we can expect, and you see here how much dry air eventually works into the storm where almost all of the moisture and, and, and heavier thunderstorms get ripped off the storm and off to the northeast in the direction of that shear from the southwest to the northeast, um, all associated with this big upper low that's going to be moving through the plains. I can show you that as well as far as the time timing and steering flows. So one of the things we're going to be watching is the placement and timing of this big upper low moving out of the four corners. Um, we, we have the system on the European and the GFS here on Saturday or Friday night. The Euro sees the storm hit Western Cuba and then move off to the West and not even come near the upper Gulf Coast because it sees this storm further off to the West and this ridge overall stronger, which kind of protects Florida and the Gulf Coast and forces our system off to the West. GFS conversely sees the storm much further north by the same time Friday night. This low being stronger, further east, it erodes the ridge and it allows the storm to be captured by this trough and move it northward. So there are two different basically avenues of what happens here. You know, you, you have the system consolidating over the next couple of days. It moves northward, moves near Cuba and, and in the western tip of Cuba by Thursday. And then the question really becomes, does this move off, you know, to, does it move off to the north? Does it have enough room to move towards the Gulf Coast or does it move towards Florida? I don't think it's going to hook and recurve really hard over the peninsula of Florida. And I don't think it's going to come. If it comes much further west, it's probably just going to get ripped apart by wind shear eventually. The European, I'm pretty sure, just winds up just generating the storm into, yeah, it just kind of has it meander for the next several days to sort of the south of us and probably eventually moves into Mexico, I would guess. Um, so, you know, there, there's still a lot of avenues of, of what could happen in the future. Um, looking at the uh, ensemble model forecast from the GFS, you can see here a lot of the runs are moving this pretty much uniformly over Jamaica and then towards western Cuba. Um, some of the stronger outliers are off to the west side of the guidance, and some of the weaker ones are more on the east side. Again, more time over land means it'll be weaker. 
um, you know, and then a lot of these systems, a lot of these ensembles move it into the Gulf and then eventually do eventually recurve it into the upper Gulf Coast. But then some of them, again, do the GFS still show some that actually just take it off to the West and then it never even comes near the Gulf Coast. So that option's still there. Ships model, uh, not going crazy with the intensity out of the gate. The ship's seeing basically a low-grade hurricane north of Jamaica, but uh, then going back to a tropical storm as it moves across Cuba, none of the um, early rapid intensification probabilities are there. So although it's not impossible to see rapid intensification, the ship's certainly not, not signaling anything major. And then uh, you can see the overall intensity guidance of what we have so far. This is only tagged this morning. Um, mostly tropical storm force guidance with a little bit of Cat 1 guidance put in there, mostly from the ships. So um, not expecting anything to swarm up very fast, not expecting anything overly strong, expecting several days of this meandering in the Caribbean and moving kind of slowly northward, northwestward. It will not be a problem on Election Day. We will have two or three days after that before this is even a threat. The window is sometime Friday through the rest of the weekend and anywhere from the Florida Peninsula to Mississippi, Louisiana coast should probably be watching um, for some potential recurve, but there's also a possibility this just kind of drifts off to the West and may not be an issue for a while or ever at all. So um, definitely two, two things to watch, but uh, that's kind of what we got for you guys today. Um, again, no reason to be worried about this yet. We're just going to track it as it comes and we got a couple more days to watch before there's anything to take any action on. So until then guys, uh, thanks for watching and have a good one.